careful, people. There's a wolf among us. Look, no harm done. I'll give you a pass, but listen. If you can't afford to look human, you're going to the farm. It's as simple as that. Welcome to Game Club, the podcast that's like a book club, but we play games and then we talk about it. I'm Dan Ryan. I'm the editor of Nonfiction Gaming. I'm Catherine, and I am now safely back in my home country of Australia. And I'm Charles Bryce, a avid tabletop gamer. And this week we played The Wolf Among Us, a 2013 title from Telltale Games, based on the Fable series of comics. And in it, you play Big B, the Big Bad Wolf, uh, essentially a detective crime video game. But first, on Game Club, we're going to talk about our Nerd Week. So my my nerd week was um, I just got back from LA and while I was there, I went to the IMAX flagship VR center, um, which was super interesting. Um, so it's basically, it's mostly vibes. Um, they had one other system as well that was some sort of deep prototype that wasn't announced anywhere yet. Uh, and then just a whole mix of VR games. Um, and it was really interesting. It must be losing a lot of money. <laughs> but Did I'm you say not a sure. prototype, like a VR prototype. Yeah, yeah. It's um like a it was a headset. So the game was pretty rubbish, actually. It was um a John Wick game that was literally just the narrator saying, "No, John," and then like you shot at men. Like there was literally nothing about it that yeah, made great. it. John so Wick pretty much identical like. to the movie. Uh. No, see, things. The movie had a lot of humor and a I've lot never of great it. moments. I've never seen it. Oh I went my to God. Watch the, the movie's great. good. The no, movie's it was fantastic. Good. Let's not say yeah. things we can't take back. So I went to watch it the other day, and I couldn't bring myself to because Keanu Reeves is just the worst actor. No, he's so good, time. Charles. How dare what? you? Are he's you a stand-in for. He's so just good everything. in John Wick. He's so good in John Wick. But as like a cardboard mannequin. Yeah, as an everyman. He's, yeah, he has no yeah, personality you or acting skill, so it's perfect. That yeah, he's, he's like a mannequin that you project. You see yourself in those clothes doing those sweet kung fu moves. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I will watch um, it and judge next week. So, yeah, it's a really great film, but um, but the VR version was not great. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was basically it was a little bit like going to kind of a old school arcade in the sense of you went in and you kind of booked your session time and each session went for like, uh, you know, vary between like seven and 15 minutes on each of the VR consoles. And you had a little ticket that's like, oh, 9.20, I'll go here. And at 10 o'clock, I'll go here and, and kind of all that stuff. Incredibly inefficient mm. in the sense of like, it was so cheap. Like I think for, I was there for like an hour and a half, two hours. And I paid, I think like 25 bucks. That's insane. Um, it was like, they, like at the arcades at the cinemas, like you're burnt yeah. without cash in 20 minutes. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and there was, you know, you obviously can't get that many people through because in the whole building, there yeah. was maybe, um, maybe 30 VR headsets. Cause Hilarious. you know, there was multiplayer games, but it wasn't poorly run because I think it's thinking about it as a money making thing is not the right way to go about it. It's no, much like more an advertising it's, scheme. Yeah, it's a it's a flagship center. So it they're they're expanding to New York. So IMAX is obviously happy with what they're doing, and it's about getting people used to VR, trying out experiences. Like most of the games in there were intended to either be multiplayer, which obviously even if you have a VR system at home, you won't tend to have like four headsets. Um, or they were just, yeah, you played a little section of a short game. So that was like a Blade Runner type game um, and then a little narrative story that was closer to a short film. And, um, yeah, I mean, it was an interesting experience. It was incredibly buggy. Like there were like three kind of consoles that were down while I was there and I was there, you know, not that long of a time. Like the staff had to pretty much have a one-to-one ratio of like a like, – a game setup area with one staff member on it at all times. Like you couldn't just leave people to do their stuff. Even in an arcade setting, VR is not feasible. Yet. But, but I mean, I think, (laughs) but I don't, I think it's just that it's so experimental. Mm. And if you wanted to see what it was like and then get one at home, like, I mean, that's what arcades used to do. Like they prepped people for having consoles. So um, I, I really liked it, but not, I liked it as someone that's interested in video games, not 
as kind of, oh, let's go to the flagship center. Like, <laughs> yeah, we've, we've seen, seen plenty of that at PAX. I mean, well, we've played around with VR headsets, of course, but even at PAX going, oh, what's this? I'm going to try this new game on an Oculus or, or a Vive or whatever. Mm. But you still do kind of need that one-to-one you know, person there either talking you through it or being able to take the headset off you and then, you know, wipe it down with it with yeah. disinfectant after yeah. the fact that when you put the headset on, you know, it's either you're in the world or it's black, like the world disappears. So you need someone there ready to, to help you out if you're not used to putting yeah. the thing on and off, let alone moving around the space uh, yeah. and throwing controllers into walls. I mean, and, but it was so cool to have a dedicated space. Like the John Wick one, there was a space that was specifically set up mm. for that game. And then you put it on and you had a gun that was specifically set up for the game. And, you know, you're in it and you're crouching because you're hiding from enemies. And then, you know, you see video of yourself afterwards and you look like a knob. Um, <laughs> but it's such a difference to, like, I, I really do think there's a space for VR <coughs> working in the way that those old school arcade settings went where, you know, you go to it with a group of friends, you try out a thing, you, you play another game. Like, I don't think it has to just be a home market. I mm. think there is actually space for that kind of communal but you need gaming a lot of space. center. I agree with you with a caveat of I don't think you're going to see it in an arcade like a time zone or an intensity. I think it, you like what's oh, yeah, uh, spawned up thing. in Melbourne. Yeah, as you, book, you book like a room or you book like a space yep. in a warehouse and you, you and six friends can yep. use a VR headset or headsets for an hour. Yeah, like yep. karaoke. Yeah. Very much like karaoke. I, th- I think especially with everything pushing to, hey, you know, I can watch what I want Netflix at home when I want. I don't think people are going to go out to the arcade and go, oh, you know what? I'm just going to have a quick, you know, two minute VR experience while I wait for my film. Yeah, yeah. It's an experience. You'll go there and plan to spend two hours doing something in a VR setting in some way. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. of course, most people won't have the luxury, unlike myself, of a uh, having a VR room in their house. Uh, I've been promised by the wife when I move back north that the front room of our house uh, will be a virtual reality room. And I'll believe it when I see it, Charles. That's all my dreams come true. Yeah, me too. We'll wait yeah. and see. So you say that, but it's actually going to be your daughter's like painting room or something yeah. or her dress up room or something. Well, yeah. it's going to get stomped on as I you know, cruise around <laughs> VRing like a boss and they'll have like to run you, screaming. Like when you jabbed one of my controllers into a wall because you were trying to hit a droid. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was R2-D2 as well. I had no reason to stab him, but yeah, man, no, none, he, was just, none. he was jazzing me off, Catherine. He was jazzing me off. I mean, this is a family show, Charles. Don't, well, that, yeah, don't, that was yeah. keeping it family. <laughs> oh, All right. right. Well, Charles, what was... Uh, is, oh, sorry, Catherine, was that... Yeah, that was all, it. Yep. yep. Okay. Charles, what's uh, what's been happening in your nerd week? Uh, so much has been happening in my nerd week. So I went to a Destiny store championship uh, on the weekend, the first one to be held in Melbourne, which is very exciting. They're happening all around <gasps> the world at the moment. Sorry, I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just drifted <clears throat> off. <laughs> is this just a repeat of last last week's clip? No, no this um, is a store championship, not just like a tournament. It's different. It's bigger. It's more exciting. <laughs> There's sweet prizes to be won. Anyway, and long it story sounds short, more exciting because I have a very long story to regale you with when we're not sure. talking on the podcast. Uh, I came second, which I was very happy with, out of 22 people. So I thought that was really good. And I got to take home some sweet swag. Uh, so that that happened. Uh, and I've just been telling everyone I know ever since, super proud of myself. No big deal. Uh, and Warhammer 40K 8th Edition uh, continues to be a juggernaut uh, and is super popular. I've already pre-ordered the next uh, next edition starter set. Uh, and that comes out on June the 17th. I'll be at the midnight release on the 16th of June. And I'm super pumped to, uh, to paint up some miniatures and play some 40K games. Excellent. I blacked out. I assume he just yeah, kept talking I, about I mean, Star Wars. Yeah, he's... <laughs> No, that he was Warhammer, Warhammer and Star Wars. Oh Warhammer God. and Star Wars. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I've been playing a few games, mostly Star Wars on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It's, it's good yeah. consistency. Yeah, exactly. Um, mine, I guess, ties in. I actually play board games with Charles and a friend of ours, Emily. Oh, uh, yeah, we, we had to... that day. That's a thing. We played Twisted. <laughs> now who's yeah. blacked it out? <laughs> yeah, I know. Just spending time with Charles just uh, yeah, it's is, hard. is like looking into that MIB flashy thingy. Um, <laughs> We played Twisted, which was like a steampunk Oliver Twist, hence the name, I guess. Uh, was it a war game, I guess? You know no, I don't things. think that's why it's called that. I think Oliver Twist is just they went 
Dickensian just because they could. Like they they took and they've got like an Egyptian faction, so a bit old steampunky and and kind of. Mm. And they kind of had an Arthurian faction century. as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with Sweet. Lancelot and like that kind of stuff, but in a steampunk version, and uh, it's all about this. Mich- the world is about a mich- kind of a steampunk AI um, controlling the world, and people are rebelling against it. Uh, the the miniatures themselves were fantastic, uh, and the backgrounds awesome, and the game mechanics were were solid. Uh, so it was kickstarted and was very successful, uh, and it should start to get into uh, the consumer's hands in the next few months. Cool. And speaking of being kickstarted, I got my ass kicked uh, by Charles and Emily teaming up, uh, <laughs> probably doing some dodgy shenanigans. I'm pretty sure Charles brought his way to dice um, after all that talk of cheating in the last episode of Game Club. Uh, yeah. But no, it was good fun. I, Give me some tips. I don't know if I have space for a game like that because you need a lot of terrain or you yeah. need sort of an interesting... Investment. It seems like it. Oh. Yeah. So the issue with skirmish games with a unique setting like that is that you need to go deep into that world, get the terrain for that world, get all the miniatures and rule books for that world, and then there's just not going to be that many people to play it because there's so many yep. skirmish games. And and not that much replayability as well, really. No, 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 like, pl- plenty, plenty of that. Plenty really? Of that. Incorrect. Uh, if you... If you yeah. want to play a very specific type of game that takes up a huge amount of room in your house. Yeah, but... Well, yeah, so if you want to play a <laughs> miniatures game, you have to pick you know, two or three uh, yeah. and play just them. Uh, and play them repeatedly uh, to get your money back. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. Um, and that's yeah. why board games are such an easier investment than getting into tabletop miniatures. The miniatures yeah. were beautiful, though, and that had a stunning. lot of detail. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so we did that. I've also been listening to a podcast. We actually have a rival podcast. Um, dun, I don't know dun, if you dun. guys. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have listened to it. They've pretty much got the exact same style as us, <laughs> and they're called the Game Club Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't, so, know, I don't know who would get those confused. They're obviously very different. Very We're different. obviously very different. The game club, it, we're just Game Club and the Game Club podcast. Yeah. Um, so, so stop me if this sounds familiar, but there are three people, three Australians, and they start off each week talking about their nerd week, the news, and then they discuss <laughs> a game and they release fortnightly. <laughs> It, it was amazing. So I advertised on it in my work forum um, that, you know, our latest episode of the, the podcast was up and uh, someone came back at me and they're like, oh, is, is this your podcast? And I looked at it and I'm like, yeah, that's my podcast. And I'm like, wait, I didn't know we were on that service. So I dug a little deeper and I looked at it and I'm like, still looks like our podcast. Then I looked at the description of it. I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's our podcast. Uh, and only by listening to one of the episodes, I'm like, wait. This this isn't us. What this the hell me. has happened? Yeah. So do you, did you look at the titles of the episodes like Banjo Kazooie and Noir. LA Noir yeah, and yeah. go like, so, yeah, that was us? Uh, yeah. Well, I couldn't remember what games we played because you know I don't know what's going on most of the time. Um, but yeah, it was fascinating. Um, so that was that was amazing. Apparently, they came out a couple of weeks after we started. Uh, and didn't realize until afterwards, and they've been waiting for a cease and desist letter ever since. Uh, yeah, I, if we had I any said, money involved, like sure. <laughs> yeah, if we if we uh, copyrighted the term game and club. Yeah. Um, no, but I, I sent them a message and just said, oh, hey, guys, you know, it seems like, you know, we have similar ideas. You guys started just sort of a week or two after us, but we've been doing the exact same thing, but different games. Um, and they seem like really cool guys. I think they're mostly on the west coast of Australia, so it's kind of like east coast versus west coast now with us being yeah. Biggie Smalls and them being Tupac. You're so white. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> are, we, are we the Snoop Dogg or are stop they it. the Snoop Everyone Dogg? Stop it. Stop it. Please, everyone stop. <laughs> I would like to point out, though, that finally your diversity push, a having a female on this podcast, has paid off. Has paid has off. It? <laughs> well, yeah. we'll see. In the crucible that is the iTunes <laughs> reviews, mm. we'll see if the diversity points are enough. We might if need to drop. If they say her shrill voice and I'd listen to this show without the woman in it, then maybe Well, then we not. know we're on the right track. I mean, if we're pissing <laughs> if we're pissing off misogynists, we're probably on the right track. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. Which leads into probably some of the news. Yeah. Yeah, probably does. I might kick news off time. with the news then. Uh, all right. Moving segment across. Segment news. Right, news. So, talking of misogynists, um, I stumbled across this. It's been all over, all, all over the place. My investigative journalism is not that impressive. Um, <laughs> so, essentially, over in the US, they've had 
a few female only showings of Wonder Woman and they're proposing to do more. And uh, people are up in arms because men get angry about things as women do. Um, There's something that a man isn't allowed to do and people are sad. Correct. <laughs> um, because obviously feminists are angry a lot of the time and make a lot of noise because, you know, there's not equality. So they kind of have justification too. Uh, and suddenly all the men who are angry finally found one tiny sliver of justification to get angry about something. And look, they're not incorrect technically if you look at the law maybe yeah oh, being was, technically correct is the yeah, best I was, I was about to say that's that's the thing like mm. according to the letter of the law they might have a case but it's <laughs> it's really not about the letter of the law it's like not. it's just so petty and like, and what's irritating is that the guys are saying, what, what was their this. argument sorry the, yeah the, let, let's just doing, back up for a second and yeah, people who okay. don't know about this sure. charles okay. just laid so, out so the argument is that female only showings of movies should not be allowed because it's discrimination uh, and a cinema is specifically a public place in the law and therefore has an equality law that applies to it and says that you can't uh, stop people from entering uh, or participating based on gender. Right. And, and that's a very well-meaning law. Mm, yeah, and exactly. interestingly, like it's generally used to apply to like, you know, the cases where there's someone that wants to have a cake made for their wedding and someone comes into the bakery and the bakery says, you know, we won't do it because you're a same sex couple or, you know, you're a mixed race couple or whatever. And it's, it's like the thing is, or we don't serve people of your color in our, you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's, it's a law that has good intentions. <laughs> I'm fascinated. And, you went straight to cakes. Well, no, no. Cause it's, it's the really it's mostly like, about cakes. <laughs> Whenever people are talking about this particular thing about Wonder Woman, one of the arguments that all the men are using is that it's exactly like the cake scenario. Like I didn't pull that out of the air. It's it's that's very, that's a yeah. story that's been recent. Yeah, yeah, I have yeah. I have heard cake, the cake thing. Yeah, just, just messing um, so, with you. Whatever. <laughs> it's the patriarchy in action. Yeah, it is. It is exactly. Um, well, I've, I've actually so seen petty. the film. It's, it's so, so petty. petty. Uh, I've, so, I've seen like, the film and, and I loved it. I yeah, yeah. Hang, hang on, I'm yeah. not quite done with this yet. Yeah. So, so I think, like, you've got female-only gyms as a specific thing, and this isn't even about being comfortable in a female-only space. It's more about this is a movie that empowers women. Maybe I see it next week, so let's not go too far into spoilers. But, uh, and you know, it'd be nice if we could enjoy that as women. Uh, and the men are like, no, no, you can't. <laughs> I mean, not on yeah. my watch. The guy that. Um, the manager of the cinema was like, you know, we've effectively hosted male-only screenings before we showed the Entourage film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I've not, never seen film. that. Maybe I'll have to go watch that and John Wick at the same time just to get my full view of great cinema. Shot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did see another interesting argument that was if they, if the Alamo Draft House or one of these cinemas that was doing this, and it, I think it's a very clever marketing thing, if if they had done this for the Sex and the City or Sex and the City Two, would anyone have cared? <laughs> I well, was I was I dragged they... along to Sex and the City Two, maybe four. Either way, no, I think there's no Daniel, been... no one would have three. cared. No, well, maybe interestingly, I think people would have cared, but potentially it would have been. Well, why is this the only? Like a lot of it is about the empowerment aspect. Like if it was, mm. we're doing a Sex and the City females only screening. Feminists probably would have gone the other way, of which I'm obviously one, to be like, really? That's what you think we want to watch? <laughs> like, but it's know? not even like, oh, okay, you can only – only women can watch Sex and the City or, say, in this case, Wonder Woman at our cinema. It's we have one particular session today yeah, out of the yeah. seven sessions we're running yeah. that is female only and we'll have female only staff and, you know, champagne, cheese and chocolate because that's what women, women always like, want. of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And, and look, that's not like like altogether that's, untrue. That's not even a generalization. Yeah. <laughs> it's very true. Um, but yeah, I mean, I so I saw the film, no spoilers, but I loved it. I thought it was amazing. Um, and it's doing super well at the box office, which is great. Yes, so right. I'm hoping that it is the start of a renaissance for DC. And specifically, like, I was actually talking about this a few weeks ago that, um, you know, Marvel has a gap in terms of they don't have, I mean, Captain Marvel comes out in two or three years. Like they don't have a strong female led superhero mm, film. Very true. And DC is about to do, they're doing Gotham city sirens starring Harley Quinn. They've got Batgirl coming out with Joss Whedon. Like that's in development. And then we'll probably go straight into shooting. Like they potentially can differentiate themselves from Marvel a little bit here. And half the market is women. Like if you make a good film, people will go watch it. Mm. Like, yeah, I yeah. I saw Wonder Woman. I I enjoyed it, uh, and I would definitely say it's the best DCEU film. 
that's out. Since the Nolans? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the, the one that they're building in this shared universe, yeah. certainly the best. However, yeah. that is not a huge watermark because yeah. of Suicide Squad and BVS. <laughs> yeah. uh, I really enjoyed sort of a lot of the film and I have stuff to nitpick, which I'm sure you and I, Catherine, will talk about offline or in a yeah. bonus episode of the podcast yeah. or once Charles <laughs> is caught up maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, I definitely agree that it's a step in the right direction. I did spend most of the film wondering if it was World War One or World War Two, Like... <laughs> Like, we have discussed actively. this. It was established that was not an appropriate thing to wonder, just for everyone else. Yeah, in the Wonder like, Woman film. Eventually, yep, I good. decided that it must be World War One because there was no Nazi insignias around. I'm like, surely they would have like the bad guys wearing that. Like, that was all that clued me in. It was really hard. What's interesting, though, is I think Captain America didn't have a lot of Nazi symbolism around because then you can't market the film in Germany. Uh, oh, yeah, it's illegal they, to no, show they Nazi still, symbols. They still had some. You must still have shown them in cinema in yeah. films, surely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you have to get them approved, not. but um, but you can show them as long as you're not showing them positively. That's why they were showing the Hydra, like the Hail Hydra, yeah. you know, the Hydra symbol so much yeah. instead. But I mean, Inglorious Bastards showed a lot of Nazi <clears throat> iconography. Yeah, but was it, it popular in Germany? Oh, who knows? It was okay. released so remember, in Germany, certainly. I remember okay. watching a video recently that uh, Castle Wolfenstein was banned in Germany, even though the whole point is killing Nazis and <laughs> how terrible Nazis are. Yeah, uh, it was banned because of all the swastika and right. eagles and all that kind of stuff that was yeah, just yeah. all over that game. Interesting. I know. Turns out Germans love glorious bastards. Move on. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> I knew that. <laughs> um, so my little bit of news is that it's been announced that um, Netflix is producing a Witcher TV show. Um, which is super exciting and I was reading a few of the articles and <laughs> so interestingly it's technically based on the books that Witcher is based on, not the game. Yeah. Um, which that would make sense. I did yeah. not know was a thing, first of all. You didn't know I, the books existed? Very There's good. comics I had, as well. Russian, so I they're had not real no books. idea. Uh, like yeah. Polish, but yeah. <laughs> Same thing, Daniel. We've discussed um, this. The Eastern Bloc belongs to Russia. But, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, excited. I'm excited for the show. Like, you know, I think, I think that would be good fun. Um, but my favorite bit of this entire section of news is this fantastic quote from the author, which was, um, I'm thrilled that Netflix will be in a, doing an adaption of my stories, <laughs> staying true to the source material and the themes I've spent over 30 years writing. No mention of the game. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just this really beautiful, subtle, like, basically, I hope the show gets it right because the game is not a thing I'm happy with. <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah. is ridiculous. Like he's obviously that artistic type who feels yep. like his yep. child has been abused, which and is it's like, silly because the games are wonderful. The game would be why his books, his books are average best at sellers. best. Yeah. Yep. 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 What's so funny I as well is enjoyed that's that. <laughs> um, I did read something recently. I don't know how true this is and I'm, I'm, we'll be getting the figures wrong, but it came out that he was only paid, I think, six and a half thousand or nine and a half thousand dollars or something for the rights to use The Witcher in, I think, the first two games. Yeah. However, it's in that in the discussion they were saying, oh, he was actually offered a percentage to begin with. And he said, no, 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 like yeah, that'll good. never work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's Screw quite him, common. Man. That's quite common because the thing is like 90% of the time or even higher, that percentage would work out to far less than – buying someone out like I there's um a very successful Australian film that made like you know 150 million dollars of the box office or something and the script editor got offered ten thousand dollars or um or a percentage of the film and he chose the ten thousand dollars and regretted it a lot <laughs> and to be fair I think The Witcher didn't really take off as a massive game until the third one correct Oh no! Uh, Second one was popular though. Not that. No, it wasn't. Not it wasn't no, as, as popular. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Not even. Not even. I'll close. accept not as popular. <laughs> uh, also, in the USSR, you can buy a house for like ten thousand dollars. So it's not in <laughs> Russia, Charles. <Yes. laughs> Still not Russia. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited for a Netflix show. I did see the um, that they had the director who directed the cinematics for Witcher Three as attached? slated to be directing it, attached to direct an That's episode. That's clever. So. Yeah, good. Yeah. So that'll get, even if it's not like the games, that'll get the fans of the games to watch anyway. Like, I'll watch almost anything that uh, Netflix puts out in the fantasy or sci fi realm. Yeah, well, exactly. There's so yeah. little out there that's good uh, that you're going to watch it anyway. So, whatever. Really? Are you kidding? There's so little show. I, I'm so stressed about trying to keep up with shows. <laughs> like, but, like, really good fantasy shows. I, I oh, fantasy, fantasy, yeah, I'll 
I'll take that, but good TV in general, I yeah, yeah, have sure. literally sat in bed at night worrying. <laughs> <laughs> sure, my, sure. I'm, I'm talking about fantasy. My yeah, next okay. point actually ties it into The Wolf Among Us, which we're obviously going to be talking about soon. Uh, but it was pointed out, I think the uh, extra credits guys pointed out that The Witcher 3 especially is essentially a hard-boiled detective story. And yeah. so if they turn the TV show into something like that, I think it could be really cool. I mean, yeah, yeah. Detective, detective detective stories are really clean structurally. Like they're they're That's kind why of they're really a fun to write. Million of them on TV, Ugh. exactly. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, but you can do them well. Like you know, Jessica Jones was a detective story, but it did it really well. I mean, Jessica um, Jones was all right. It was great. It was my favorite show of last year. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a big call. Um, it's a subjective thing, so can't be a wrong call. <laughs> okay, moving on before you guys, uh, before it we have be to wrong have a private screening. If your subjectivism is wrong, so just saying. <laughs> well, maybe if you watched John Wick, you'd have a better understanding <laughs> yeah. of film, Charles. Maybe That's I'd really classic, get it. Good film. <laughs> yeah. Moving on to my news for the week. Uh, I'm a huge D and D fan, as I try and point out in every fortnightly episode of the Game Club. And people still don't care. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure there was a review on iTunes saying that we're amazing uh, for talking about D&D when no one else will. <laughs> Speaking of, though, uh, Wizards of the Coast flew a bunch of people who've been live streaming D&D on Twitch uh, to their offices in San Francisco and have been putting on a couple of days, a 12-hour day streams called the Stream of Annihilation. And they've been out announcing new... Uh, sort of their new setting that they're going to be launching along with some of the new stories. There's going to be dinosaurs, undead dinosaurs, uh, flying monkeys, grungs, which are like little frog people, um, and crazy masks, goblins. And they're discussing the updates to D&D Beyond, which I know you talked about, Catherine, in one of our earlier episodes. It's uh, the oh. new... <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's the new sort of online tool that they're creating. Yeah, and they yeah, said. They're setting it up so not only will the rules be on there and not only will you be able to create characters on there, but if you are a YouTuber or a Twitch streamer that is has one of these D&D shows, you can allow your audience to check out um, the players who are in it and sort of see live their uh, their stats and, and their health and things like that if you're using the website to track those things. I feel the silence. <laughs> how I feel about that. I'm interested, but similar to how I feel about Charles's Destiny talks. Yeah, no, that's fair. I, it's revolutionary, I watch, Dan. It's blowing my mind. I watch a couple of different D and D streams. Like obviously the the uh, the Pax guys, the Penny Arcade guys. Yeah, they're, they're um, they have a, a game at the American Pax twice a year, and Jerry Hawkins has been running a weekly show, which I find really cool, and a couple of other podcasts. So you should, you know. Well, you shouldn't check that out, Charles, because no, you, you're useless. No but. one should listen to those podcasts. You should only listen to our podcast. Okay, good. <laughs> Keeping that on brand. Spe- speaking of, uh, we should actually get into the main meat of yeah. the podcast this week. Let's do it. The Wolf Among Us. Wow. Tell me what you really think. Hey. I need to tell you something. What is it? You're not as bad as everyone says you are. I'll see you around, Wolf. So I didn't realize The Wolf Among Us was set in 1986. <laughs> <laughs> well, it definitely wasn't set in modern times. I mean, you just have it, to look it, at the cars. It was pretty... Um, it was a subtle 1986 though. Like, you know how sometimes they'll have really overt things that you're like, oh, I'm in the eighties or oh, I'm in the seventies. Like I, I thought it wasn't present day, but it kind of felt more timeless and wary in general. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's fair. Well, it's set, uh, according to the Wikipedia page, it's set nearly 20 years before the events of fables, the comic. Uh, and I think the fables comic is set around the year 2000. So that makes sense. Yeah, it's set when it came out. Sure. Um, and there are like once I realized that it's in 1986 uh, or in the 80s, some of the things do make sense. I think like Georgie, good old Georgie Porgy, has you know this mobile phone that is this giant brick of a phone yep. with the sort of the rubber whip antenna, uh, and uh, you know everyone has to call each other on payphones and stuff. You're like, oh yeah, that, 
that was a that was a thing before phones. <laughs> I love that that's your issue. There's like talking frogs, and you're like, oh, that mobile phone just isn't doing it for me. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> Not that it wasn't doing it for me, but like just thinking back, I was like, oh yeah, okay, I, I get that. There's a lot of other stories that do. Uh, like novels that do similar things to take technology out of the equation. I guess you can have a better story with less technology, can't you? You can. So it's actually a thing where, you know, there's um, a super cut video of like, oh, no reception. Oh, my phone's out of battery. And it's because so many horror films, it's (laughs) like, oh, someone's chasing me. You call you call the cops. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> story like, over. Like story over. Yeah. <laughs> so it um it actually narratively yeah it gave you a little bit more leeway with things. And I just want to recap the premise of the story before we go in too much deeper into like what we learned. Good plan, Dan. Good plan. Uh, so it set all the fables. You not really explained in this in this game, but the fables themselves, the big bad wolf, Snow White, all of your favorites have had to escape the homelands and come to America where they've sort of lived and created this place called Fable Town where they live in secret along uh, with the Mundies who are us, I guess. We're kind of like the muggles Um, because they were driven out by some sort of evil oppressor, which they don't really go into in the games, but they talk about more in the comics. Thing is, though, there's a murder. Someone's killed a fable for the first time in many, many years, and it's up to the big bad wolf, Bigby himself, who is the sheriff of Fableton, to find the murderer. And that's where sort of our story begins. Uh, and again, like we'll talk about The Witcher, it is a, it's essentially a hard-boiled detective story with, you know, a gruff, chain-smoking asshole <laughs> going around trying to solve a crime. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty classic noir in terms of like, I, there are so many kind of thematic things around it that are just callbacks to old films or just, you know, the, the color scheme and the music and all of that, like hard bitten detective Mm. investigating murders. Like it's, it's, it's a really, um, well-worn trope, but done in such an interesting way. Did you guys know much about these? I mean, some, some of these fables are pretty common, uh, but were you scratching your heads ac- across any of the characters in there? Or uh-huh. so I've, the, I've read all the, the donkey comics. girl uh, was a bit left field. So, uh. so I've I've read all of the comics, um, and I'm also a huge mythology fan. So for me, it was like this game was I, oh, I well, played well. it. Yeah, I played it before when it came out originally, um, and replayed it for this. So yeah, it was it, it's as someone that's read the comics, it's very very satisfying. Like it, it's a lot of. Um, kind of extra backstory and obviously it's always nice to have a character that you know super well like Bigby and be able to play it and have a bit of agency and and um, effectively a choose your own adventure book like that's really what it is like there there are game aspects but they're pretty light like mm-hmm. yeah so uh, they they hit a lot of common fables like your, your big bad wolf and you know his one of the pigs whose house he blows over and you've got Cinderella and Snow White but yeah there were some random ones in there um and so Bloody Mary, I mean, is she a fairy tale or is she like a horror kind of story? So well, I mean, I, what's, the, what's the difference, right? really? Right, because it had like, the, the Little Mermaid. So it kind of it went all over the place. It wasn't just classical fairy tales. But Little Mermaid um, is a classical fairy tale. Oh, maybe. Like, Touche. Oh, like, I guess Disney just appropriates everything, doesn't yeah. it? So. Yeah, exactly. same with Bluebeard. Like, Bluebeard's a really dark fucking fairy tale horror story. But it's a very old one, yeah. Mm. Uh, and yeah. like he just because uh, Bluebeard's the one that kills his wife, or his wife finds his secret room in the cellar with his previous dead wives, and then he yep. murders her too. Really? Yeah. Uh, okay. Never heard of it. Yep. And that's really? why. Mm. <laughs> right. This and, coming from the girl that couldn't work out World War One or World War Two. I mean, yeah, let's okay. not throw that, <laughs> Captain. <laughs> yep. But yeah, big. Be- uh, sorry, Bloody Mary's a weird one because it is that that thing where you look in the mirror. And mm. say Bloody Mary three times or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. it's based on an earlier legend. So it's it's based on um the legend of the ghost of Queen Mary. Mm-hmm. Um and that's where that the repeating Bloody Mary in the mirror came from. Like I mean, the thing with, you know, myths or or legends or, you know, movies or anything like that is you can almost always trace something back earlier. Like my one of my favorite examples with sleep sleeping beauty is that, you know, there is that is a very much a cleaned up version of that fairy tale. <laughs> I'm not going to repeat the real fairy tale. Well, I say real, but like, who's to say which one is real? Like, yeah, well, exactly. Fairy tales evolve and change and um and grow over time, which is why they're such an interesting, interesting thing to set 
um, an entire world and cast of characters in because there's, you know, you're familiar with some but not others and then seeing how they actually interact is super cool. Uh, and also super easy because none of it is protected by IP. Uh, so you some of it do is actually. Want. Some of it is. Like is the it? flying monkey is Wizard of Oz. And I mean, it isn't uh. now, but it's like there, there's a really interesting mix of like there are some things like Cinderella where you can't, as long as you don't do it in the Disney way and draw it in the Disney way, like they can't copyright that because yep. that's an older story. But like things based on films or what have you, like you, you actually, they would have had to be pretty careful with what they showed okay. and what they didn't. Yeah, sure. Yeah, because yeah. um, do they call it? Do they call her Belle, like Beast and Belle? I can't remember now. No, they call do, her Beauty. They call, they call her, her Beauty, beauty right? Yeah, because yeah. it's the story of Beauty and the Beast, whereas Disney called her Belle. I guess. Yeah, maybe. But but also the um, I mean, the film is called Beauty and the Beast, but that is so clearly based on I mean a, a bunch of different earlier legends that if they tried to sue, like copyright wise, it'd just be like, yeah, good luck. <laughs> yeah, there's no Gaston in this yeah. Wolf Among Us either, yeah. which I was a bit disappointed about. <laughs> Were you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the main the main cast we got, so Big Bad Wolf, uh, Ichabod Crane, Snow White. Uh, we don't see Red, Red Rose Red? Uh, or Red? Uh, Briar Rose. Briar Rose. Rose. Uh, we got the magic mirror, so like mirror, mirror on the wall. We got that winged monkey you mentioned, Bluebeard, uh, Three Little Pigs. So we see one of the Three Little Pigs, I think, Charles, you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, they talk, and they talk about the farm a lot, which isn't – you don't get to see it in the game, but it is uh, sort of a focal point of, of the comics at one point. Uh, we got Mr. Toad from Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Oh, yeah. Uh, or oh, what? what is that series of stories, Catherine? You should know this. Uh, oh, the what is it? Watership Down? No, I'm thinking of a different one. Um, oh, Bad, Wind in the Willows. Toad, yeah, Wind in the Willows. I'm like Toad Hall, Badger. Yeah, Wind in the Willows. Yeah, yeah. Um, we got a, we 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 name check the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, but I think we only get to see the butcher. <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah. Uh, and then of course the crooked man, who I have no idea where that comes from either. Um, I knew that only because I played, and this is going to be one. Of, this is sort of. Um, touching on the game, a game that I recommend called Mixed Up Mother Goose that I played back in the 80s. Um, or like I played it in the 90s, but I think it came out in the 80s. And I remember there was a, a rhyme about a crooked man. Okay. And yeah. um, there was a crooked man, you know, he walked a crooked mile, he found a crooked sixpence upon a crooked style. And I was just like, oh, okay, that's what that is from. I have no idea what that has to do really with creepy. anything. creepy. <laughs> But I'd heard of that before <laughs> as, a, as a fable. Yeah. Yeah, right. It seems like there's such there's so many rich areas they could have taken things from that they picked particularly niche characters. And they might have done that on purpose so they could do with them what they wanted. Um, but certainly I was, I was fascinated to see them picking things like the Crooked Man, which were just so vague and you know, r- almost random uh, rather than doing other things but i mean i, I think it's i think it's because those really big characters you you kind of feel like you know them and then mm, either sure. you're you're pushing off from a character so going like oh you know the big bad wolf isn't big and bad or you know he's big but he actually has a really strong moral code and that's interesting but sometimes you just want a little bit more room with the character where people don't come in with their preconceptions i guess mm. um yep. i mean i i thought it was fascinating in that um actually bringing it back to our conversation about VR uh, about VR is that I mean it's effectively a choose your own adventure game and as I was playing it because I'd just been playing a VR you know game and experience I was kind of like it's a lot of this game that you could do in a VR setting and it's a it's very much a game like it's it's not a it's not a, just a narrative experience but yeah it's kind of a really cool choose your own adventure game that like format wise, like I would be very surprised if Telltale didn't have VR versions of their various games in the works. Like, quite possibly. I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone has VR versions of something in the works yeah, in true. the near future. Otherwise, you'll die. So, just to talk about the mechanics of the game for anyone that hasn't played it. Yeah. So, if you've played a Telltale Telltale game before, it's very familiar. But essentially, it's a story that you're playing your way through uh, by either picking. Uh, dialogue choices uh, to drive the game forwards and every now and again you're required to either click on some things with the mouse to 
usually punch people or glass people or stick a bar into someone or et cetera, et cetera. Uh, or you're hitting W, A, D or S keys to dodge things or move around. There's uh, there's slight areas where you walk around, uh, but that was kind of clunky and I feel like that almost served that yeah. purpose. Um, you could definitely get rid of the, the walking around mechanic. Uh, yeah. I played the Walking Dead series, the Telltale one, and uh, that walking around has some stealth aspects to it and actually serves the purpose. But in this one, it just seemed to to take a bit of time and not really add anything, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's how the game plays. So, choose your own adventure with some key presses. And, I mean, I wondered with the key presses, I'm like, because they, they kind of build up this idea that the choices you make, like where you choose to go first and how you choose to um, mm-hmm. work the dialogue trees, that they really matter. And I'm like, but what would happen if I just didn't, like there's no health bar or anything. So if I didn't yeah. duck this chair being thrown at me, how would that affect the game? Like, and I, I, I always did, like I always pressed the button at the relevant time or whatever. Sure you but, did, Catherine, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, but, I missed a few. And, and when you miss matter? one, it flashes red. Uh, so maybe if you miss too many, it game overs, but I'd be very surprised. Um, Um, I actually had the opportunity to find out what happens if you pick a different route uh, because I had to reinstall the game at one point because it just wasn't working for me. Uh, The reinstall didn't actually help, and it turned out just restarting my computer six times is what fixed it. Oh, yeah, standard. That's what you should have tried the first. Make classic PC gaming. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I love my PC gaming. Uh, So, yeah, so I in the first chapter, I picked two chase the woodman uh, and tie the woodman up to the pole before I f- discovered the severed head, etc. cetera. Uh, mm-hmm. But then when I went into chapter two, it couldn't pick up my save file and it had me choosing one of the, the Tweedledum D brothers, Tweedledee yeah. and Tweedledum, uh, mm-hmm. choosing one of them instead and tying them up. And the difference was that in the opening of chapter two, one was getting interrogated rather than the other and revealed certain piece of information rather than the other. So it, it wasn't a huge differentiation, mm-hmm. but I it guess might have it had- couldn't be. Yeah. I mean, I think there are ongoing effects. Um, I haven't played through the game and chosen different choices each time. I it was it was interesting. A thing that really really annoyed me, and it was such a small thing. Um, and I'd be fascinated to know what you guys think. Is that at the end of the chapters when they tell you what everyone else has chosen, mm-hmm. and I couldn't figure out whether I got angry when I chose the same thing as everyone else or <laughs> if I was stupid when I chose the same thing, when I chose different things to everyone else. And I just didn't want to know. Like it made me really yep. it second the guess. Yeah, it made me I really feel. second guess what I had chosen. I, and- I just feel it defeats the purpose of what a game is trying to achieve. So for me, and I've said this before on the podcast, is that a game should try and achieve an experience that feels unique to you. And the second yeah. they put stats in there for other players, it kind of takes away the uniqueness. Yeah. It also I would have removes liked it some of the end of all five chapters. Sure. Like it removes some yeah. of the verisimilitude and sort of brings you out of that game because you're yeah. like, oh, okay, like oh, I'm making these choices, I'm choosing these stories, and then, oh hey, here was the road less traveled. You know, everyone else chose this other choice. And yeah. You're just like, oh shit! Like, I forgot that I'm not the only one playing it. Like you said, Charles, it's it's taking you out of that world and it's taking you out of that oh this is an experience that i have created uniquely oh no it isn't you've you've wandered down the path along with 80 percent of other people <laughs> yep uh, yeah. i would love to be able to see those stats if i went hunting for them like i love the idea of them being there yeah and that's fine. yeah yeah just not compulsory yeah, yeah. i thought it was hilarious in, and this is talking about a different telltale game the walking dead I remember seeing, I think at the end of chapter one, you have to make a choice on who you're going to save. There's this sort of nerdy guy or this girl. And when I played it, I saved the girl. And then I got to the end, it was like 90% of people saved the girl compared to the nerdy guy. (laughs) And I I saw an interview with the developers going like, yeah, okay, yeah. So effectively, like he died a virgin. Uh, Everyone (laughs) wanted him dead. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, and and there were so many choices in there that were just it, they feel obvious and in these yeah. choose your own adventure games i guess it's what motivates you so there's kind of a few things that could motivate you you could either want to be an asshole and just troll this world and be a dick for fun you could want to do what seems fair and just to you as yourself or you could do what motivated me and that was i was really convinced that if i played my cards right i'd be able to sleep with snow white by the end of the series <laughs> That was that was yep. your motivation. Because <laughs> in The Witcher, 
I mean, similar kind of things. You play your cards right. Each one of those ladies. I mean, they're identical games. They're identical games, you know. Correct, correct. <laughs> uh, well, they're very similar in a lot of ways in their themes. But they yeah, those, those ladies, you're going to get some action. And I'm like, maybe if I, I help Snow White along and, and play my cards right, you're going to get some <laughs> sweet snow. But I, I really enjoyed, um, no, no. I mean, I could have told you that, but that's kind of a reveal from the Get comics. Get a snow so, plow, if you know yeah. what I mean. Stop it. Oh, Dan. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's, I do not approve of this. That is. <laughs> um, no, I, I really liked the swearing as well. It made me realize how much I miss swearing when <laughs> in video games, you know, no one says fuck. And there are a few C-bombs life, dropped too. I kind of want to say that in real life. It is yeah. down and dirty in this game. <laughs> yeah, I, I loved it. I um, Yeah, no, I, I really liked the dialogue. I felt it um, was kind of true to the comics, but I just loved that I was playing a game where I was like, oh, I, I get to kind of interrogate people and tell them they're being a fucking idiot. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, it, it, especially because it's, oh, it's fables. It, you know, it's... Um, fairy tales and it's a cartoonish style obviously that's telltale's sort of style now yeah but yep. then it's fuck you big b you yep. fucking cunt rah, rah, like yep. i'm gonna cut your fucking head off and it's just like oh shit yeah <laughs> it's getting real, Stuff's getting real. <laughs> yeah. and it, it's options like you walk up to someone in a bar and he gives you some smack talk so it's like the options do you a console him b tell him that he's being a dick or c just glass, glass him in him, the yeah. face yeah <laughs> <laughs> and did you choose glassing because that's what Snow would have wanted? <laughs> no, no, it's not what she would have wanted, Catherine. So no, it's really not. <laughs> yep. So he was. Uh, I missed so many options because of he this. had that I'm leash on. I think that little puppy dog, being a puppy dog to Snow. Yeah. What's interesting is that there was always that, almost always that fourth option of just stay silent. Did you end up taking that option? I at did all? a few times. So there were times because often when you picked a dialogue option, it cut them off. And there are a yeah. few times where I wanted them to keep talking and kind of give me more before I made a choice on which way to go down. So, yeah, I, I did stay silent a few times. So, I felt that that, like, sometimes I was like, oh, I want to stay silent here. But with that count, you know, how uh, the timer is coming down, like, hey, make a choice. Um, often I'd panic and be like, no, 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 I, I do want to say something. It's, and it's that gamer in me that's like, no, 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 there has to be a correct dialogue option. Silence is never the correct option. When logically <laughs> I know that it could have been. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or also that there's no correct option per se, you know, like. I don't think there is. I think it's always, it, well, it's always going to end the same. The game only goes in one direction. There's just a few different paths you can take. So mm. it does give you that freedom to kind of do whatever the hell you want because uh, you're not going to miss content. At, oh, I guess. So you will miss, miss content if you choose particular options. So Crane's apartment, for instance, I never got to see it because I chose the other locations to look at. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that's all right. Uh, these, these things happen and that's life. Sometimes you have to make choices and you miss out on things. Yeah, it was interesting when pretty much that's, each chapter gave you... It's very deep for a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, life's, life's a bit shit and you don't always get everything. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to life, children. Yep. That's how we do, and then he just lights up a cigarette, yeah. um, which they don't actually explain. Obviously, it's the it's a cool detective motif that is constantly chain smoking. But in the comics, they actually talk about how he has to chain smoke so because his nose is so sensitive and yeah. he doesn't want to be smelling the city all the time. That's why he smokes these really nasty cigarettes. I just realized they're called Huff and Puff because that's what he does to the pigs. Yep. So yeah. Witty. <laughs> um, there's an interesting I'm theory sure. as well because every time he meant every time he offers someone a cigarette, they're like, "Oh, that's a really shitty brand of cigarettes." Yeah. Um, except for uh, I think it's Faith at the start smokes the same cigarettes, but doesn't midway through, but does again towards the end, or not Faith, but Narissa. Yep. Um, so there's theories that Faith is actually glamoured up to look at to be Narissa and things like that. Uh, that she didn't really die, and it's a bit ambiguous. Seems a bit much. <laughs> yeah, so at the end, you can choose to follow her or stay behind. So she's essentially, spoiler alert, uh, Nerissa, who's the Little Mermaid, um, she's the one that puts the head on the doorstep and sets up people and lies and blah, blah, blah. And at the end, you can either, but to try and escape, like, you know, she has the reasons she's done this that are pretty reasonable. Uh, and you can choose to follow her or let her go. I chose to let her go. Did either of you chose, choose to like chase her down? No, I chose I to let her go. Yeah, I chose oh, to let her go as well. I wanted I was, to know what happened. Yeah. <laughs> but um, doesn't she, 
I've been reading, she does say like, oh, she does say the same sort of stuff that Faith says as well. Um, I, didn't, like you, I didn't dig that deep. Okay, that you know, oh, you know, you're not as bad as everyone say says you are and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true. yeah. Uh, which Faith said at the end of, at, at the, the start. start. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, and this is probably a criticism of most Telltale games that I've played. It's just they feel like choose your own adventure, but. It, where nothing really matters like that true, right yeah the choices are eh. yeah like and not that i ever got to play it because I, I don't have the right console and so i actually played this on ipad which worked really well classic ipad um Gavin. yeah but you know a game like heavy rain that was kind of acclaimed for having genuine choices that really meant something and if you made a choice at the start you didn't see 50 percent of the game because you've yeah. chosen the other way i just feel like i get why from a game design point of view they don't do that because that's incredibly, you know, wasteful. Like you're doing something that most yeah, of your players sure. will never see. But it just means that the games always feel like they will go through such effort to say, oh, your choices matter, your choices matter. <laughs> and then you end up with a mass effect scenario where your choices meant nothing. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's it's even less than Mass Effect because Mass Effect at least got wide in the middle and then, yeah, it came all back yeah, to and then, pressing and a button narrowed. at the end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but even The Walking Dead had, I felt, had more choice than this because the choices yeah, you made definitely. meant People you had more or less yeah. characters with you in the end. Yeah. yeah. Um, People and, dying is always a good choice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whereas I guess maybe they couldn't do that in Fables because they didn't want to impinge on the comic. And I feel that mm. maybe this is why they, going back to Charles's point, some of these were quite obscure characters. Mm. Is it because the best ones are already in the comic? And yeah, so they probably. had to choose the more obscure ones that it wouldn't matter if they die, got so, thrown down the witching well. So that's except. why the girl that dies at the start was some random donkey girl. Now it all makes sense. I'm yeah. like, donkey ass, what? Uh, it also why does, do I even care? It does make sense if you think about it that she is still alive because her whole deal was putting on a donkey thing, glamour to make it so no one could see who she that she was really the princess or something yeah also that that backstory like when they were like oh the king you know the mother was dying and he looked for the most beautiful maiden in the land and it was dark. his daughter i'm like this is a dark game <laughs> <laughs> that really set the tone right from yeah that. a bit of cheeky incest really uh really sets yeah. a game up yeah. oh, when you first go to the pudding and pie i'm just like oh shit i just want to punch this guy in the face i want to wreck his entire shit and um, you got the option but I, I was like you know what i'm not going to because fuck i'm here i'm here on a job i don't want it to Is go it out of you control. thought snow was gonna sleep with you as well because that's why i didn't do it <laughs> <laughs> i more thought like okay if i wreck this guy's joint like i am i'm the asshole <laughs> i'm the monster yeah i'm i am the monster they all say i am um <laughs> But yeah, did you did you wreck his joint, Charles, or would you did you think Snow wouldn't like that? Snow, Snow would, would not have liked that. that, Dan. I kept that. Did not wreck a single thing. What about yeah. you, Catherine? Wow, I wrecked things sometimes. It really okay, depended just, how I was feeling. Spot <laughs> things like I'm not going to wreck, you know, this sweet light fixture. Well, sometimes but that DJ booth that's really getting to. Sometimes me. I would be talking to someone and the conversation would be fine, and there'd be the glassing option. And I'd just be like. I'm a bit bored. <laughs> and like nothing they said would be that that outrageous, but I'm like glassings on the table, glassings on the table. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, if I would have played again, I would just I'd go to town. Chaos would reign and Because you know Snow everything. will never love you, so right. or maybe maybe she's looking for a bit of excitement in her life and the edginess would push her over the edge. <laughs> um, do you want do you want comic spoilers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit me. So, anyone that wants to read the comics and not be spoiled, stop here, blah, blah, blah. So do they not do stop end up, listening. Always yeah, keep listening. They do end up getting together and poor Snow has like a litter of Big Beast children. Oh, Jesus. And they could like, and they fly around and, they can and stuff. Fly because it's really bizarre. Yeah, like they kind of powers and they're like half wolf, half children. But I think she has like eight or something. She gives birth to them hurt. all at once. So I'm like, Snow, like, poor girl. Yeah. It's not going to look the same after that. Because it turns out his what? mother was a wolf, but his father was the god of the wind, and that's why yeah. he can huff and puff and shit. So that's why yeah, they can all fly because they're uh, part uh, gin or some shit. Loose. Like, yeah, it's, no, it's a, it's a backstory. Like it all makes sense in the comic, but um, but yeah, it's kind of it. It did mean that certain things in the game for me weren't big reveals. Like, I mean, mm. I assume most of the people playing this game would be fans of Fables, but maybe that's wrong no, because I don't think like. So. Like Snow White being on the step and it being like, dun, 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 is it her? And it's like, well, I know it's not her because the comics open with Snow White 
alive. So yeah, that's the thing. See, that was it, the it one twist. That, much of it. that was the yeah, one twist yeah. that got me. I thought she was legitimately dead. Uh, yeah, and that- then when she wasn't, I'm like, oh, shocking. So I was yeah. going to say, maybe you should play this game before listening to the comic, but if you've just heard me say that, you've already heard us spoil it. So <laughs> Yeah, so sorry. So <laughs> But also, the Fable comic opens with uh, Briar Rose being dead, and that being a whole thing yeah. that's part of that first chapter as well. I mean, so- it's, it's, a, it's a really clean device. Like, as I say, like, you know, from a, from a writing perspective, mm-hmm. um, a murder mystery is is you just have a really strong narrative. So much you get better to when see- they're not really murdered. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's true. But you just get to see what people do under pressure and actually follow a storyline. Like, mm-hmm. uh, do we want to do want to bring it back a bit and firstly talk about what we liked about the game? Put a bit of structure to this conversation. <laughs> no. <Yeah>. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what did you like about the game, Catherine? Um, I loved the story. Like, I I thought it fit really well with the tone of the comics. I loved. Um, I mean the whole vibe, like the whole package I thought was just excellent. Like I've actually listened to the soundtrack of this game a bunch of times, like, um, you know, the soundtrack, the coloring, the, just the artwork, like, I I mean, so many bits of it were just done really well. And then together it all just came to this really cohesive part of both the fables universe and just a really great game. So yeah, that's what I liked. (laughs) Very good. Dan. Uh, I really enjoyed the characters and just that world and the way they crafted it, as we talked about, you know, it being in the 80s, you have to walk around and that lends a lot to the story. You don't see a lot of that. It's all just, oh, I'll get out my phone and I'll call the police or I'll send yeah. them a f- I can take a photo of this evidence and, and take that back to the thing. Mm, Whereas yep. when you strip all that away, it is more about the characters and how they actually deal with a problem then, oh, okay, technology is just going to sort this out. Like when they he's in the police station and they have to go in there and, and physically take all the evidence out. And it's just like, oh, wow, that's, that's really crazy. Um, also, I just wanted to punch Ichabod in the face a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah I lot. thought that was really he good. So they, they make you hate him straight away. Yeah. Um, and they made what I think is pretty believable characters within the – the constraints of their, you know, what you would think of them as a, as a fable, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, so I think the character development was really cool and seeing, you know, beauty and beasts relationship on the rocks was really yeah. funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I definitely liked the, uh, the setting and what they did. Uh, it was just something, I mean, I guess it's existed before, but just different in that they took these fables, which I guess originally aren't, you know, happy and cheery and Disney, uh, but they, they grabbed them and took them back to their dark places and, and just put a really interesting twist on stories that we already knew. So, you got to kind of connect the dots here and there and, and discover new interesting things within, within this world and just things like Georgie Porgy, for instance, they took his, you know, Kiss the Girls rhymed and, and took that mm. to a, a really dark place of him being this, you know, brothel slash strip club manager yeah, uh, and exploiting these women and the big bad wolf that they twisted it and, you know, he's, he's trying now to be good. But I really also enjoyed that for most of the game, the big bad wolf turns into this werewolf kind of character and I'm like, oh, that's pretty badass. But then near the end, he turns full wolf and yeah. giant and he just rips shit apart, and that was actually a really cool moment for me. So Yeah, yeah, it's very cathartic. Yeah. Touching on that darkness, there's a moment when you speak to Woody, uh, the, the woodsman, who obviously has this huge an- antagonist relationship with you because yeah. it's the woodsman and the big bad wolf, and he comes clean and he's like, oh, hey, yeah, I actually wanted to rob them. And yeah, like, what the good. fuck are you talking about? He's yeah. like, oh, yeah, I was, I was going to rob Red Riding Hood and her grandma, but you were already there, so I figured I'd kill you and get a reward. And it's just like... Holy shit, that's dark. Yeah, yeah, I loved that. <laughs> I mean, that story is dark enough as it is, where the wolf has eaten her and he opens up the wolf and fills it with stones or whatever. Mm. Um, but Just still, that like, idea that- okay, everyone's an asshole. Yeah, everyone yeah. in this world is is a piece of shit in one way or another, <laughs> except for Snow. Charles, stop putting her on a pedestal. <laughs> Yeah, well, she actually bores me as a character. Wanting to sleep with her aside, she, as a character, she was pretty plain. She gets and, more uh, interesting and frustrating. What when she has pops out eight wolf children? <laughs> she she gets more interesting character. as a character. I actually, I, I didn't hugely like her um her facial animation. I thought she always looked like her mouth was downturned, in, even when mm. she kind of wasn't meant to. Um, it was very subtle, but it annoyed me. 
Well, let, let's let's slide nice and easy into what we didn't like about this game, then. Yeah. If yeah. Okay. Jump to the gun. <laughs> yeah. oh, I think I'm really mentioned mine, which is this, you know, the choices that you make are meant to matter, but fundamentally you get funneled back into the same point anyway. Yeah, sort of that illusion of choice, and it's okay as long as you, as you that illusion holds, but as soon as that illusion breaks, uh, as soon as that yeah. glamour falls away, uh, it, it all it's a troll underneath. Yeah. <laughs> Good reference. <laughs> you, I don't know. I felt like he was reaching. Yeah, it was a bit of reach. <laughs> give him some points. Just give him something. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, how about you, Charles? Any issues? Uh, I did have some issues with the game. They're obviously, the Not hardware is- limitations of your computer crashing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. well, that was an issue. Uh, but that possibly wasn't the game's fault, more my buggy computer's fault. Uh, the fact I can't still get the time to stay current. I mean, computers, who <laughs> understands them? Uh, so many people. <laughs> <laughs> so many. Uh, the game itself, uh, for me, I mean, I've already mentioned the walking around mechanics were, were not great uh it it felt loose it didn't felt tight a bunch of the animations were pretty dodgy how old is the game does anyone know uh, uh 2000 and did look this up um but it was 2000 oh god 13 yeah i was like 11 2013 but... really that late okay well there's no excuse for some of those animations then there was one specifically near the end where there was like a metal door that opens and closes, and it was just so like flimsy and jarring it didn't have any like traction i guess on the world and so animations were were iffy um some of the the character interactions i felt like you didn't have a choice and i guess this comes back to choices not mattering to how their story ended so the toad getting sent to the farm for instance i don't think it mattered what you did like you even were able to offer him money at one point it's like i don't want your money it's like bullshit that character would 100 percent take your money yeah. in a second and then he's like but then he do, you do give money at one stage finally and he's like oh snow didn't want the money and i'm like what that's ridiculous so definitely there were some character interactions where it was only going to end one way for that character yeah uh, no matter what you did um, and I felt like what, the choices that you made didn't impact the story as well. So when you killed Tweedle, is it dumb or do you? I'm not sure. One of them. And then you killed the other one anyway. Um, I mean, no one, no one really cared. I felt like Snow was going to be really upset about it and like take you off the case or blah, blah, blah. But it was like, oh no, you just, you just killed him. That's a thing. And it's like, it's a one liner later on in the game while yeah. someone's angry at you. So I don't know, it felt, felt a little superficial and like you're on rails, I guess, which for a game that is specifically an adventure game, like choose your own adventure game narrative. I don't think you can get away with that. Yeah, you want to have a Yeti option where, like, you you choose it and it's like, oh, shit, there's a Yeti. You know, you've got a totally different story now. Uh, and you get down a different path and you can't get back to the original. Is that a reference to something? Or I think there's a lot of Yetis, Yetis in Choose Your Own Adventure games. Or books. Choose Your Own Adventure Is books. That- like those Go- <laughs> remember those Goosebumps books? Yetis? Yeah. I'd- Okay. Okay. Shut Just down. go with it. Just yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. A yeti feature. Hey. Well, look. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a bigfoot or a yeti in this particular game. <laughs> You're not wrong. Well, what was that white thing that the dude in the bar turned into? Because that was uh, a troll. The Gren? Or was it? Gr- what was his name? Gren. I think. Grendel. It was Gren. Yeah. Sure. Oh, I've, I've got it here. Um, Mythical being of some description. Yeah, like one of those Beowulf kind of. Yeah. yeah, sure. Classic Beowulf. Uh, but yeah, so it would have been nice for the story to derail and for you not to reach a successful ending. That's what I want out yep. of an adventure game. I want the threat of you stuffing up. And if that results in a game over screen, that's fine. It then gives yep. me the threat of my options later on, leading me down an Meaning incorrect, something. wrong, or well, I wonder path. if not, even not a game over screen straight away, but just like an unsatisfying ending because you didn't. Yeah solve the case you don't yeah, get yeah. to have sex with snow which would have charles would have been the night well, well of course because women <laughs> are, the the, are the reward we get for performing admirably yeah correct uh, and, and keeping well, our testosterone in check well, that's how most bit, disney movies end so. <laughs> there was a little bit of that in this game as well i mean like it's hard to separate the classic noir conventions from the game but it's like damsel in distress and you know like there were a lot of things like that where women were all pretty passive and then Bigby helped them. Um, yeah. But that's, which is true to the comics and true to film noir, but it's one of those things where you're like, well, it feels a little regressive now. To be like, fair, I think, okay they it. It. Okay I think they touched on it. I think they touched on it there because Bigby, I, I vaguely remember a dialogue option where Bigby says to Snow, or you can say to Snow, like, you know, I don't want to lose you or like I, 
I just want to protect you. And mm. she shoots right back with like, I'm not yours to protect. Yeah, yeah. she was a pain in the ass. <laughs> Just shut me down. That strong every woman moment. who doesn't want your protection, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> I liked the little touch of her. And the, okay, so this is something I liked. Flashing back uh, because we didn't. I didn't mention this before because I couldn't think of it. Uh, l- the little touches. So like her shirt has little snowflakes on it, mm. um, and there are a whole bunch of little touches and little references throughout it that were really clever. And I enjoy clever things like that. Um, yeah. So like in Madagascar that I watched tonight, the one with the animals. There's a like reference to American Beauty where stakes are falling from the sky instead of roses, and clever <laughs> little things like that impress me. I mean, Madagascar is not a hugely clever film, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, big call, Catherine. I don't know. You're just throwing out calls tonight. Yeah, uh, generalizations and statements. Ballsy, ballsy move. Uh, yeah, similar, similarly to that, and we talked about Georgie Porgy, and you mentioned the make the girls cry. He has that tattooed on his chest. He does. Uh, And I thought that was really, um, like, I mean, it's not super clever, but it's kind of (laughs) cool. Yeah. Uh, I did have problems with the, not so much the animations, but I found that whether it was just the PC or how it loads, you might have had a different uh, version on iPad, Catherine, but Mm. uh, loading between screens, like, things are just, like, stick and then continue. I didn't Um, have that happen. It was fine on the iPad, but iPad, my main complaint was how expensive it was. Um, oh, right. It was yeah, twenty three sure. bucks for all five. For Ooh. the first episode was free, and then for the other four, if you bought them all in a bundle, it was twenty three. And I know it's. I actually have it on computer. I just wanted to play it on my iPad, and I was like, "This hurts me." <laughs> yeah. The other problem I had with it being episodic, and these things usually come out one a month or one a week or whatever it was. I think it's one a month. Uh, each episode would come out, and if you're playing it month to month, it makes sense to have a. Ooh, teaser for the next one. And oh, then, I uh, turned my screen off when, the, when those yeah, were happening. Yeah, but, it, and, you know, it's like, it was like a next time on Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. Yeah. But it would just show you stuff from the next episode. And I really hate that. Especially also, if, I, if yeah. I already have all the episodes, I'm going to keep playing. I don't need to be enticed to keep playing. I get why they did it. But if you have all five, it should just cut those out. And also it was part of the thing of... um. I thought, oh, I thought my choices mattered, but you're showing me what will definitely happen yeah, I know, next episode. Right? It kills the illusion. <laughs> yeah. And it's not based on what you chose. It's, no, yeah. here are just bits that, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I, I turned my screen off and took my headphones off every single time <laughs> those popped up. Yeah, I don't mind so much the recap parts, although, again, because if you're playing it all in one, one or two sittings, you kind of know what you just did. You don't need a recap. Uh, and that's necessary for... Oh, it was released a month ago, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, the game should be smart enough to know that, oh, no, you were playing this 10 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to say, should we do the quiz? Oh, okay. Well, well, final thoughts, final thoughts. Yeah, final thoughts. Yeah, final final thoughts. thoughts. Is, it, is it a must-play game as an indie game? Uh, I don't it's know very it's a, popular. It's... I don't know if it's a must play for me, but I think if you read the comics, it would be a must play for me. That, that's where I sit on it. Like or if you're thinking of audience. getting into the comics, perhaps. Yeah. Very, very niche audience here, people. Yeah. Not really. They're incredibly successful comics, Charles. There's I just feel that if, you, no if you're only going to play one Telltale <laughs> game, it doesn't have to be this one. Correct. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, yeah, I think Telltale games are great uh, for what they do because they're really the only people who are doing Choose Your Own Adventure this sharply and this kind of um, oh they found their niche and they yeah. are and they just, just yeah. pumping them out yeah um so if you're only going to choose one telltale game i guess it wouldn't be this one uh if you really enjoy the fable world and i guess the idea of it i guess you could really enjoy the game is it a must could i have survived with not playing it yeah probably would you and this is just a a thought I'd come up with because the whole idea of the fables and it's you know these fairy tale creatures being put in modernish day, uh, and we were talking about American Gods last episode. Should there be a Telltale American Gods game? Oh, fuck yes! That'd be so <laughs> oh, good. Oh god, it'd just be. I mean, if I thought this was edgy, <laughs> that would be very edgy. Imagine the things you'd be pressing keys for. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah. I would play that though. <laughs> oh yeah. And you have to play as Bill Quist maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're just going around swallowing people. It's <laughs> the whole game. That's great. There's a market. Um, Alright, so overall thoughts, yes, this is a recommend. I mean, if you if you had it on your radar and you haven't played it by now, 
you should definitely give it a try. The first episode is free and you'll know by the end of the first episode, I think, if you want to yeah. continue playing it and you want the rest of that story. And, and what I what I can recommend is Telltale Games. So if you're a Game of the Thrones fan or if you're a Walking Dead fan, find those Telltale Games and play those. They even um, have a Back to the Future game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's Guardians not great. Of the Galaxy. But <laughs> it's not great. Let's, let's not talk about it. <laughs> the Back to the Future um, ones, I think, before they hit their stride with uh, Walking Dead and things like that. But Yeah, sure. Uh, so. the, yeah, the new Guardians one looks pretty cool. Mm, and there's a Batman one. So just kind of find your niche and your world that you're interested in uh, and play that Telltale game rather than flocking to this one if you're not that interested. And speaking about not being interested... Um, <laughs> Hopefully you're interested in this episode uh, or this this podcast, Game Club. Not the Game Club podcast, but the different. other guys. Very different. <laughs> Just Game Club uh, by Nonfiction Gaming. And we have a Patreon that you can check out, patreon.com slash NFG Live if you want to support the show. Uh, you can sling a couple of dollars our way. That'll really help out. You don't have to by any means, but it'd be lovely. Uh, or if you want to be rewarded without taking any financial cost to yourself, you can go to audibletrial.com slash game club and get a free audiobook of your choice. Absolutely free. You sign up and Audible will send us a bit of support uh, just for you signing up for free. So check that out at audibletrial.com slash game club. Charles, can you recommend an audiobook people might want to try? Ooh, American Gods, American Gods. So just second second episode in a row, we're just recommending American Gods. Yeah, that's it. That's the only thing you should be listening to right now. Uh, be relevant, people. I I've recommend been listening the, to... Oh, sorry, go, Kevin. I just... Uh, the Library at Mount Char is my recommendation. Excellent, I'm excellent book. Pretty and sure it, you recommended that last episode no, as I did well. It. So I'm going to try something new. You totally did. You totally <laughs> did. But it's, but it is on the same vein. I've been listening to the Dresden Files, uh, and Dresden Files is about a wizard living in the mundane world as a wizard for hire, essentially a private detective. And it's a low technology. It's it's modern-ish day before sort of cell phones are a big thing or mobile phones are a big thing, but he doesn't use them because magic sets off terrible things uh, with technology. But it is very much about him going out there and you know, having to crack the case and, and finding the killer and whatnot. And I just finished one called Full Moon, F-O-O-L, and it's about werewolves and lycanthropes and stuff. So it was very similar to this uh, Wolf Among Us that I was playing. Wow, that sounds like a great recommendation. Seems like you really put some thought into that, Dan. Yeah, actually, it just all tied together really well. Yeah, uh, nice. but I'm still listening to the library about Char, so this is, this is why it's <laughs> on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Catherine, you... Uh, Last week, or last fortnight, we played a uh, keyword countdown, I believe, but you have a new quiz for us this week. I do. Uh, I do. I'm I'm not sure it's very good, um, okay. so I apologize in advance. <laughs> oh, do you not accept it? Well, listener, you tell us if it's any good on the iTunes page. We'll yeah. give us a review. Yeah, they'll <laughs> kick me off and they'll just become three boys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like the um, other podcast. <laughs> so... Um, so it'll just be you guys answering. You get a point per question, and I don't know. We'll see who wins. <laughs> Seems pretty standard. Can we get three points per question? Sure, absolutely. Yes. Excellent. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what What are the questions about? Uh, they are a range of things, all to do with fables. Um, so the original fables comic book series, written by Bill Willingham, ran from July two thousand and two to July two thousand and fifteen. How many issues did it have? And I'll accept whoever's answer is closer. 50. The original run? The the Fables run, not any of the spin-offs, anything like that. Just how many issues did it have? I'm going to say like 120. Dan's already said 50. Final Go. answers? That's, yep. So uh, the answer is 150. Oh, so Charles wins. Yes. Charles wins. I was like one a month for 13 years. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty accurate. Yeah, um, yeah right. Uh, so, Fables has a very patchy development history um, with various studios trying to develop it as a TV show and also as a film. Um, in 2011, two shows premiered within the same month that were both accused of being rip-offs of Fables. Which two US shows were these? I watched it. Um, oh, what's the name? Was one Dan. of them the, the Grim Grim Fairy Tales? Dan Grim? gets one of them. Dan yeah. gets one. The other one, it was that really like poncy one and it had a female as the main character. She was blonde. You You're so on I'm the right track. About, right? You're so on the right track. It was like 
I don't know. It, and it had a title like Fairy Tale or something similar to that. Five, that was really obvious. Four. Um, fuck. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put that forward for one point five points. No, not accepted. <laughs> it's like it's so hard. Oh no no no! It was, it was one of the sort of fairy tale things like Happily Ever After. No. Um. No, nah, I don't know. Oh yeah, Once Upon a Time. There we go. Oh, God damn it! God damn it! <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Thanks for the hint, you dumb motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> all right so um i'm not sure should each of those count three no i think okay. i should just get the points for getting the first one. Ah, uh, that's not how that works each one gets <laughs> 1.5 so i'm at 4.5 to dance 1.5 okay not that, not that i'm keeping track or care no no so, well i'm gonna say the winner is whoever gets more of these Ooh. i don't know it seems fine <laughs> Charles is already unhappy. Um, in Fables, Prince Charming is a character that is a serial womanizer with several ex-wives, all of whom are original um, fairy tale characters. Which characters are his ex-wives? Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, and Cinderella? Bam! Dan wins. Well, I feel like by reading the comic books, he had an unfair advantage. No, because no, those were all ones where you should, like... You should know because in fairy she tales, ends up it's with always Prince Charming. Prince Charming. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, no. Yep. So, so it's not Beauty because she ends up with the Beast. Um, yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Sleeping Beauty ends up with Prince Charming, actually called Briar Rose in the comics, but I would have accepted either. Cinderella, Snow White. Yep. And I, I, I love that little touch because it's like you go, oh, and then her Prince Charming came along and you're like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Sneaky bastard. Yeah. It's all the same Prince Charming. Well played, Dan. Well played. Yes, yeah, suck it. Even score. Do we have a tiebreaker? Oh, yeah, that tiebreaker. Was, that was the tiebreaker. I don't nope, know. Nope, no, you have to come up with a tiebreaker on the spot, which is great because I know when you're under fine. pressure, you would just you say? Up. Would you say then that that tiebreaker question, that last question, was for the win? So it must have been well, for four points. Well, I said it was points. for the win. Oh. Yeah, she, so she Dan did, wins. But, but I demand a tiebreaker. You demand a tiebreaker. Oh, my God. Um, Dan's going to come Oh, wait, wait. I've got a tiebreaker. I've got a tiebreaker. I've got a tiebreaker. I've got a tiebreaker. What is the next Telltale game coming out? Oh, uh. This is embarrassing. A whole podcast is about games. <laughs> well, they just did Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, what's the next one? What's popular at the moment? Nothing. Witcher. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm going to say you both lose. Yeah. Um, no, nah, the, they're going to do... I don't know. Actually. I don't think I've seen it anywhere. I don't think I can. I'm going to say Game of Thrones. Is that your final answer? No, they've already done a Game of Thrones one. Yeah, but they already did Walking Dead as well, so... Yep. Dan wins. Game of Thrones what? season oh! two. Season two. Yeah. Yeah. Well played, good sir. Well played. Because <laughs> that's obviously the only other thing that's popular at the moment, but I'm like, they've already done it. Well, they, yeah, yeah, I mean, the they've, Game of Do Thrones... You know. have, well, HBO have announced five more Game of Thrones oh, spin-offs that they're working spin-offs. on. Yeah, sure. Uh, who knows how many will actually out of that one. be finalised? But yeah, they're gonna they're gonna pump a lot into that. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, cool. That was my quiz. That was I was really successful. Good. Yeah, <laughs> I like that one. Well Let's quizzed. Do more Kevin. of those ones. Well Thank quizzed. You. Thank you. So for those of you playing at home, count up your scores, and um, if uh, you did better than Charles, which it's not hard, <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> send me a tweet. <laughs> Send him a tweet. You did only just send me a tweet, tweet. Dan. No, no, no. Yeah, let's, I, let's I not won talk pretty about convincingly. It. Only because it was three points per question. <laughs> Which you suggested. <laughs> um, should we do recommendations for if you liked this game? Yeah, yeah. so recommendations. Um, well, for me, my big recommendation is a um, game based on a little-known series of books called Discworld, but the Discworld Noir adventure game. Um, because you go around and you kind of you're a wolf investigating a murder, and it's um. Oh it's, really? Are you Sergeant Angua or? Uh, no, no, you're a different character. Um, you're it's it's your kind of hard bitten detective type in the watch. All of those things you follow. Sounds great. You, you follow the smells. I mean, it's it's pretty dated now, but the for someone that likes Discworld, it's probably it's it's the world and the characters and the dialogue and things definitely makes it worth it. Yeah. Um, and it's it's. It's also noiry, so it's all the same things that this game had in terms of all those little, like things like noir voiceover and you know like rain on the streets and all of that kind of stuff. It it has, so I I really loved that game, and um, if you liked this game, I think you'd probably like that game. Cool. 
Charles, did you have any recommendations? Yeah, so when it comes to choose your own adventures and choices that actually matter, uh, Fallout 3 was the game that I'd mm. recommend. Because uh, I think out of any game that I've ever played, the choices that you get to make in that game really impact the yeah. rest of your play experience. Yeah. I'd say the same thing about New Vegas as well, actually. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. I think that had significantly Three, more same. different like different types of endings. Uh, I, I love Compared them. to 4, I mean. Compared to yeah, yeah, oh, 4, yuck. I, I love <laughs> three in new vegas into a into a neat little package yep because same engine right so right right yep totes yeah cool damn uh i will recommend mixed up mother goose uh <laughs> which is a 1987 game um also <laughs> well. was re-released in 1992 <laughs> <laughs> where uh, in the in the world of Mother Goose, you're uh, you're a little dude. It's an adventure game where you got to go around picking up objects and go taking them to the people who need them the most. Uh, and by doing so, you get them to complete their fable. So you might pick up the uh, crooked sixpence and go take it to the crooked man, uh, or you might find little Miss Muffet's Muffet or Tuffet or whatever she's lost. Sounds dirty. Yeah, it does. and then you've got to go take it. Is to it like leisure? Sh- leisure? Fuck leisure suit larry except for fairy tales <laughs> very much so a part that's of, a game I, don't think, play. I don't think you type anything in maybe they'll make a casino version of mixed up mother goose um but it mostly just opened my eyes to all the weird fables that we don't really hear about anymore like old king cole and uh everyone's heard of mary had a little lamb but no one's you know really heard about jack spratt or um you know the Everyone's heard about the Hey Diddle Diddle, but whatever. Um, so I recommended that. And another recommendation I have on here is just to read the Fable comics because apparently they've got 150 issues. Big <laughs> you. Yeah. So many. Uh, so go read them. They also have spin-offs like Jack of Fables where it just follows Jack and things like that. Uh, it gets a little bit weird when Snow White starts giving birth to poppies, but, you know, that's yeah, cool. it's pretty fun. And uh, my final one would be The Witcher 3. Uh, because for all the reasons I mentioned earlier in the show, it is a detective story. You go around using your detective vision, aka Witcher sense, to find clues, and then you fight badasses. You have like weird wolf-like eyes. You have a wolf pendant. It is very much like Wolf Among Us. Also, any game that you could play, you could also recommend Witcher Three as another game to play <laughs> if you've never played it. It's the best game of what 2015. I don't think I, unless it comes out on iPad, I don't own anything oh, I can play it. <laughs> Catherine, yuck. I know. You need to come over to my house and just play Witcher 3 for a few weeks. No, thank you. Are they, re- are they releasing <laughs> it on the Switch, else Charles? during that time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are they releasing it on the Switch? Because your computer can't handle a Telltale game. <laughs> so I don't think Witcher is the go. <laughs> Maybe they will. I've already played it. So there. <laughs> All right. So that wraps up uh, this Game Club episode for this fortnight. Thank you for listening. Uh, We're going to go out with the poll is still on for which game we're going to play next. Um, Charles, I always ask you. What's winning at the moment? Well, I always ask you which one's winning, and I assume you don't have it loaded up. I just never do that. And you know I don't, (laughs) and you do this to embarrass me. (laughs) I'll open it now. So we're See not going to be playing this game. Uh, we're actually going to be playing a small indie Aussie indie game uh, for the next episode of Game Club. So we're going to let the poll keep running a little bit longer. But Papers, the options, Please. Papers, Please is winning. <clears throat> Papers, Please is currently winning. Uh, and then Sunless Sea and FTL, Faster Than Light, are, drew, are drawing at the moment. Yeah. But there's still going to be another two weeks to get your votes in. So head over to nonfictiongaming.com. Uh, put your votes in if you want to see one of those others be played or if you just want to shore up the lead papers please has i'm looking forward to playing that i so, would i've played everything except for ftl but i have just played a lot of sunless sea because i thought it looked really good anyway <laughs> right cool story. for the next episode though we will be playing armed with wings rearmed because love we like name. it yeah love we it. love that name <laughs> also uh it's an australian developer that i would had the um the pleasure to chat with at pax for the last couple of years and there's a video up on our website about that and he sent us a couple of keys and it just launched uh two days ago i think so i figured it'd be a nice sort of current indie game we could sink our teeth into look at us being nice. current yeah uh didn't your interview with him did you ask him why he chose that name no i didn't um ah. maybe I, I can send him a message and see if we can get an answer definitely if you i like. want that on the podcast <laughs> if it was horizon dawn of zero horizons <laughs> warhammer dawn of war <laughs> that warhammer. was the yeah. only other choice yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah i'm a bit a bit upset that it's not rearmed armed with wings armed rearmed 
they could have more. He could have yeah. really fluffed it out. But. Maybe that'll be the next the next game <laughs> in the series or the DLC. Sequel. Yeah. Nice. Uh, any closing uh, closing messages from you guys? I think that we'll wrap it up about here. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah. It's See you. Uh, talk to you all next time. Bye bye. Yeah. Hey. Okay. Bye. Bye.